It's time for what America really needs. Faith, family, fitness, freedom. From the home of Pikes Peak, here are your hosts, Jason Lupo and Aaron Lujan. Welcome to Faith, Family, Fitness, and Freedom. This is 100.7 The Word. I am the co-host, Aaron Lujan, hosting the show today. We got Jason Lupo co-hosting on the phone. What's up, Jason? What's up? I'm out here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. It's overcast day, but, uh, you know, still hot and in the middle of nowhere. What do we in Colorado need to know about Lincoln, Nebraska at the moment? You know, actually, I, I, I come out here every year for the same swim meet. We love it. The kids have a blast. Um, it's actually a really, really, really cool city. I think if you've never been to Lincoln, Nebraska, or Omaha, Nebraska, and you just think Nebraska, all you think is fields, right? Cornfields. But uh, there's, there's, it's a cool city. It's got a cool vibe. Um, they just did a lot with the uh, college campus out here. They got a beautiful new sports facility. I drove by yesterday and went, oh, my gosh, that thing's huge. Um, so it's, it's a cool city. Lincoln, Nebraska, you're on the map. Well, today we're here to talk about a watershed article that broke yesterday. It's got the Twitter sphere on fire right now, which is Louisiana requires all public classrooms to display Ten Commandments. A law signed by Governor Jeff Landry on Wednesday makes the state the only one with such a mandate. Critics have vowed to mount a constitutional challenge. So, Jason, we decided to discuss this article because we think this leads us to many interesting conversations Jason, what is your first impression when you read that this morning? Well, I could tell you that uh, the people that are utterly pissed off about the fact that now we have the Ten Commandments displayed in schools in Louisiana, what they don't understand is they keep going back to, uh, uh, you know, the whole idea of separation of church and state, and they misunderstand the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, which is that the government should not make any laws that essentially prohibit churches from acting in a way that they see fit. That is what the Establishment Clause is. That's what the First Amendment is. The First Amendment is the protection of the church from the government, not the government from the church. And so we're going to see this giant battle play out. It's going to be intriguing. Um, you know that this, uh, this is going to go all the way up to the Supreme Court probably going to take years. There's going to be a, a period of three or four years where we hear absolutely nothing about this, and then all of a sudden it's going to pop back up because now it's being heard in a, a district court somewhere, and then it's going to be heard at the Supreme Court level. And it's going to be interesting, the ruling, so I think it's going to uh, have some pretty profound effects on uh, whatever else comes down the pipeline. But um, I'm all for it. I mean, uh, the, name something in the, the Ten Commandments that... Uh, number one isn't already in our law or number two just isn't good moral principle right there's so much to discuss like why are we doing this to begin with what is it about the ten commandments do you have a problem with the flaws of their constitutional defense we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to get into this issue you are listening to faith family fitness and freedom on 100.7 fm the word Jason Lupo's my coach. Of course he makes me strong. Of course he does the heavy lifting. Of course he loves freedom. Of course he makes me work hard. Of course he fights for what's right. Of course he cares about me. Of course he defends me. Jason Lupo's my coach. My teacher. My leader. Of course. Of course. Of course you should vote for him. Hey everyone, I encourage you to vote for Jason Lupo for House District 20. I'm Jason Lupo and I approve this message. Paid for by Jason Lupo for Colorado. Welcome back. This is Faith Family Fitness Freedom. You are listening to 100.7 FM, The Word. I am just sitting, substitute co-host of the show, Aaron Lujan, and we got our original host, Jason Lupo, phoning in from Nebraska. Nebraska. We're talking about the Louisiana bill that the governor passed yesterday requiring Louisiana to put all the Ten Commandments in every single elementary, middle school, and high school and uh, Jason was just talking about how the clause in the First Amendment, what was the name of that clause, Jason? Establishment Clause. The Establishment Clause, that it doesn't protect the students from the evil Ten Commandments as we are witnessing. It's actually a protection of the church and the people from government intrusion uh, into religion. Is that a fair summary of that, Jason? Well, yeah, and, and what, what people don't want to realize 
what a lot of people don't want to realize is the fact that if you want to talk about religion in schools, it's already there. It's already there. Because agnostics and uh, atheists, both of those are its own religion. So the idea that religion doesn't exist within our schools is 100% false already because they teach from a perspective, they teach from a worldview of uh, this Big Bang Theory of evolution as a whole, and that is a religion in and of itself. And so it has nothing to do with, the Establishment Clause has nothing to do with the state being uh, protected from the church. Nowhere in history has the government needed protection from the church. It's a, it's a preventative measure for the church to be protected from the government. And if you look at history, it goes back to Britain when we first came over and established the United States that we had Christians being persecuted over there in Britain from the government. And so this is a protective measure for the people, for the church, and for all religions, not just Christians, right? The First Amendment does not just protect Christians. It protects the Jews, which are now being attacked, sometimes from government entities in this country. It, atta- it, it protects the Muslims. It protects the Sikhs. It protects every single religion for them to be able to practice how they see fit in this country of the land of the free. Right, I get that. And so the constitutional argument that, oh, you're infringing on my constitutional First Amendment rights is bogus. I think you've made that very clear. Anybody with 10 minutes on their, of time can do some research and determine that. I think that the issue is, is much bigger. I believe these cultural battles are downstream from spiritual warfare. Because if you actually look at the Ten Commandments, they never want to have a debate about the content. What is the issue. They want to hide behind this veil of, well, you are infringing on my constitutional rights. That's, you just destroyed that argument, Jason. I think, what is the issue with making false idols? What is the issue with not taking the Lord's name in vain or rest uh, and observing the Sabbath and honoring your father and your mother and not murdering and not committing adultery and not stealing? What are the problems with this? Because it would obviously be substantively ridiculous for them to say, we have a problem with you telling our children not to murder. You know, while there's, we have a murder problem across the country or you, we have a problem with, you know, telling our kids not to steal. We, we, because they're never going to defend the merits of stealing. They're never going to want to debate that the 10 commandments are somehow harmful or toxic. They want to hide behind this veil of constitutional infringement. And so go ahead. They actually are though, right? Like, we have seen this massive increase in theft and shoplifting, and the left and the radicals are actually defending theft. Really? They're defending theft. They are across the country. What's an example? Go ahead. No, I'm just curious. What's an example? Like, I mean, because this is news to me. Like, they're making arguments publicly that that theft is is permissible and and virtuous? Let's put it this way. When you know that the crime exists, when you choose not to arrest, when you choose not to prosecute, you basically rubber stamp the fact that, sure, you know, do whatever you want. Theft is okay. We don't care about this petty crime. And actually, some of these groups have come out and said, well, you know, we have to allow them to steal because the economy is so bad and they need to be able to feed their families and all this other nonsense. At the end of the day, uh, we've all of these boil down to this right of conscience, too, which I, I, think, I think we can get to in a moment. But they have fought tooth and nail for a lot of these things. And even though they might not come out and say, hey, guess what, you know what, we believe that uh, you know, selling children in Colorado is okay. Well, they haven't explicitly said that, but their actions yes. speak louder than their words. And they have the ability to toughen the penalty for child solicitation in Colorado, and the Dems voted it down. Overwhelmingly, in fact, not a single Dem crossed the aisle to vote to toughen the crimes. We have the weakest punishment for some of the crimes against children in the entire country. In fact, California 
their punishment is three times worse than what we have in Colorado. So California is supposedly the leader of the left. No, Colorado is. And so even if you don't come out and say, yes, it's okay, what you choose to do on a legislative front, toughening penalties, and what we do from a prosecutor prosecutorial standpoint in prosecuting these offenders basically says, yes, you can do whatever you want. That's what we're saying when we don't prosecute, when we don't arrest, when we don't toughen the crime, when we don't do anything about it. And what's really interesting is we have the left who is fighting to bring uh, Sharia and Muslim law to this country, and they're open about it. They want to bring Sharia law. Well, what's the penalty in Sharia law for stealing? I think they cut off your hands. They cut off your hands. Do you know how many? Do you know how many people we'd have in California without any hands? Sharia now, law is look, looking kind of sexy right now, if you ask me. Well, let me tell you what. Here's the problem: because we also live in the United States, we're going to cut off their hands and give them disability for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Jason, what I'm hearing you say is that their actions are an implicit endorsement of this behavior, and I think this is all true, and I think it's indicative of the cultural current that we're living in, which illustrates this bigger point that I'm about to make, which is that this is downstream from a spiritual battle. I really believe, especially for those that are of the faith, that believe that we live in a physical body that's surrounded by a spiritual realm, that we have demons that are peed off because we are in explicitly stating from a government uh, from a governmental uh, position of authority that the biblical worldview is the truth that in the United States of America or at least in the state of Louisiana they are choosing to live in a world where the God of Abraham is the one true God and his son Jesus Christ reigns and rules and that the Ten Commandments is the pillar of law and order. It's the pillar of our legal system. It's the underpinning of where the Magna Carta and the U.S. Constitution derived itself from. And I believe that they hate that. They need to maintain this secular humanist construct in the culture that we are this country of diversity, right? Diversity up until the point of Christianity. We are going to be diverse with Sharia law. We're going to be diverse with Torah. We're going to be diverse with the LGBTQ agenda and new age and go on and on and on. But once the Holy Bible, once the old Testament steps into the picture, that's where the diversity ends. And I believe that this is really just a offspring or an offshoot of a, of a larger spiritual battle. Would you agree? I, I think so. And we also have to look at the fact that so many people look at the United States as one government. We're, we're not one government. We're thousands of small governments that make up the United States. Because your local city is a government. Your state is a government. The federal government is a government. And so too many people believe that the government as a whole, the United States as a whole, is making decisions for the United States as a whole, which they do. But a lot of these things are states' rights issues. And so here we have Louisiana that said, look, this is a state's rights issue, okay? We're going to make it a state's rights issue, and this is what we're going to do. And it's going to, ultimately, at the end of the day, when the Supreme Court comes down on this decision, if they come down in favor of Louisiana, they're going to say, hey, this is a state's rights issue. And given the fact that we're citizens of this country, we have two options. You can either go fight it by winning seats and overturning the law, in Louisiana, which is probably what the Dems are going to try to do, and they're already trying to do, or you move states. You move states to a state that aligns with your beliefs. Yeah. Like that's, that's the country we live in. We have the ability to do that. But we also have this, this situation where, um, yes, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem from a larger sense in the fact that, yes, it's a spiritual battle, but regardless of government and whether you agree with them or not in whatever sense we maintain our right of conscience and our right of conscience is is part of the establishment of this country and the fact that if a government puts in a law that goes against our own worldview that goes against our conscience we don't have to follow it we don't have to abide by it 
is actually that there's there's historical context and there's precedent in the court for right of conscience. And we've forgotten this in this country that, hey, your legislators can make all the laws that they want, and if they go against what is truly part of your beliefs, what's part of your core, what's part of your conscience, you don't have to follow that. Well, I if think they our... created a law that said that everybody has to murder somebody, or they will be murdered themselves, you don't have to follow that. It goes against your right of conscience. Yeah, well, I think the founding of the Christian faith was essentially an act of civil disobedience. Jesus was crucified under the charges of political sedition. He refused to be told how and and how and and how, who and how he was going to worship God the Father. And the the one thing I want to say, Jason, is this issue always reminds me of how. Our enemies, the secular humanists, those who are pushing a secular worldview and want to snuff out the biblical worldview, seem to always be able to control and manage the debate where we're on the defense and they're on the offense. It's always about painting the picture of us uh, who are attempting to advance the kingdom of God here on earth, that we're somehow, this is what we're against. We're always characterized of what we're against. I want to take these next couple minutes and maybe make the argument on why we're for this. Why did Governor Landry make a very good decision to implement the Ten Commandments in the school system in Louisiana. Well, I would say that we need to remind our children of the Ten Commandments. That these are the laws that God passed on to Moses and that, that this is not only a moral foundation for your personal life, but it's also the legal foundation for the American system. Would you add to that on why this is an important move for the culture? Well, let's put it this way. We're in a defensive zone because we've chosen to not be in an offensive zone. It's a choice. And if you go back and you look at the, the disciples and spreading the word and spreading the gospel, spreading the truth of the gospel throughout all of Rome and Ephesus, they were breaking laws left and right by preaching. They were breaking, breaking custom. They were breaking tradition. Like, they were on offense for Christ. Paul was on Romans and, Most Wanted every night. Yeah, and, and, and the problem is, is that we've gotten to a point as a church in this country, and actually around the world, where this idea of meekness is okay. No. Right? We just have to be meek. Like, we have to be... No. And, and we, take, we take Romans 12 out of context, about following the government, all this other stuff. Romans As 13. a church, we have become super weak in spreading the word of, of Christ, especially in this country. And so this is a, a huge step in the right direction, uh, like round of applause for yes. every legislator that put their name on this bill, because they're going to they're gonna be dealing with this for a long time. What do you and they're for- going to be in the media for a long time. So, you know, kudos. Yeah, big shout out to governor in Louisiana. Big shout out to, uh, to the Louisiana State Legislature. Where do you see this going, Jason? Kind of your political vision, you know, looking ahead in the months and years ahead. Other states following suit. Um, what, what do you see this political battle, this cultural fight looking like in the, in the months and years to come? I would hope that other states follow through. The problem is, is that we have weak legislators across the country. And I, I was on a show earlier this week, uh, and I was, they, they attempted to pin me on this, but I, I, I truly believe it. We have weak legislators. Because, and I'll give you an example, in Wyoming, 100% controlled Republican, they have a supermajority, they can pass whatever they want in Wyoming. And when they had the opportunity to uh, protect women's sports, they couldn't pass the law. They couldn't pass the law in Wyoming. If you can't pass the law in, the law in Wyoming where you have complete control, what makes you think that you're going to pass something like this? Because we have legislators that won't stand on their own principles and morals. And so I am shocked that Louisiana was able to get this through. I would hope that every Republican state who has Republican control would do the same. But they won't. Now, that we see that when the Democrats have control over something, they pass every single piece of legislation to change a culture. And the Republicans won't do the same thing. 
we got to get rid of the Republicans. We've got to get rid of the quote-unquote conservatives that are serving, that are not standing for what is biblical truth. And that's what's happening. Until we get rid of them, we won't see this moving across the country. This is surely not going to happen in Colorado in the next, you know, 15 years. Yeah, it well, might in the future. I don't know if you saw the recent interview with the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, with uh, Tucker Carlson. And uh, one of the interesting parts of that interview is when he said that a lot of the decisions that he made were, were because he consulted God first and that he... Um, are, at least in El Salvador, they're now experiencing a record drop in crime. And uh, there, there's just a lot of improvements in their culture and their society. And he's giving God honor. And I'm starting to sense maybe that the Holy Spirit is on the move. Um, I want to be hopeful, Jason, and say that maybe other states, maybe uh, in Idaho or a Utah or a Wyoming, is going to look at Louisiana and say, these guys had the wherewithal to step up and do it. Um, we're going to do it too. You sound to me like you're a little bit more pessimistic. Um, I, I just think this is the pathway forward. Um, do you, do you have any hope at all for maybe other sectors of of the culture following suit? Maybe not government. I do. Okay. I do. So, for instance, we're, if you look at what's going on in politics in Ireland, Ireland is Ireland's super interest is one of the most interesting countries when it comes to political stuff and when it, when it comes to government, right? They have a war that's essentially never ended between the Protestants and the Catholics. Um, they are on the front end in a lot of ways on social stuff, on social issues. And you're seeing that in parts of Ireland, these heavily controlled democratic areas are flipping to super conservative uh, leaders. And they're electing the super conservative guys because they're fed up, they're tired, they're done. They don't want to do it. And so, yes, I believe that it's going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen all at once. I don't believe it's going to happen all across the country all at once. It's going to be pockets of people that something happens, they're just fed up, they're done, they're tired, and they're going to put the right leaders in place. Yes, I think but we I, need... Go ahead, I'm sorry. But I don't think that we can write off the fact that accountability is a huge aspect. And what we've done as a church... For years and years and years, we've said, oh, the Bible says do not judge. We, we, we take that so far out of context, because mm -hmm. there is accountability for brothers and sisters in Christ. You're a brother in Christ. If, if you are stepping wayward, it, we are called to go, hey, listen, Aaron, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Maybe that's not really what God has in mind for your life. But the Church has looked at that and said, oh, you're judging Aaron. I'm not judging Aaron, I'm holding him accountable. And we failed to do that. Hey, guess what? We elected you because you, you said that you were going to stand by biblical truth and biblical principles, and you're not going to, and you're not doing it. I'm going to hold you accountable. We're going to talk about this. And instead, people go, no, 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 well, you just don't understand, like, you have to be diplomatic, all this other stuff. No, it's called accountability. Let's get back to accountability. If everybody got back to accountability, which is the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments were brought down saying, hey, listen, guys, I'm going to hold you accountable to this law. That's what God said. I'm going to hold you accountable to this law. Amen. We've we'll, got to get back to accountability. we got to get back to accountability. This is Faith, Family, Fitness, Freedom on 100.7 FM, The Word. When we come back, we're going to close closing arguments. 30 seconds, Jason, 30 seconds, Aaron. Thank you for listening. Full Armor Sports Teams has a new facility for after-school youth programs. It's located at 2380 Montebello near North Academy and Union with two pools for swim lessons and swim teams, a weight room for powerlifting, conditioning, and more. Full Armor Sports Teams is a Christ-centered and family-oriented organization bringing the youth of Colorado Springs together. For more info on after-school and homeschool programs, go to fullarmorsportsteams.com or call 719-629-SWIM. Thank you for listening to Faith, Family, Fitness, and Freedom. This is 100.7 FM, The Word. I am your co-host, Aaron Lujan, with our host in Lincoln, Nebraska, Jason Lupo. Jason, go ahead and give us uh, closing thoughts on this Louisiana bill implementing the Ten Commandments in all the schools. Well, it goes back to accountability, and we have the opportunity to hold some people accountable this upcoming Tuesday, June 25th, in the Colorado primary it's really important that you go out and vote. It's really important that you vote for people that are actually going to stand on biblical truth. And that's all I'm going to say. 
Thank you for joining us, guys. Everything is on the website, on the podcast. You know what to do. This was Faith Family Fitness Freedom on 100.7 FM The Word. I am Aaron Lujan with Jason Lupo. See you next week. <laughs>